Hello, welcome to episode 28 of our Ostrov Alpha 4 Let's Play. It is October of 1746 in our town, and we are on Alpha 4 Patch 3, a few small additions made in this most recent update. You can now relocate families from house to house if there's uh, different houses available. And there's also a few more export options, but the post didn't specify what that was, so let's check out and see what we've got. Bark, okay. Barley. Now has texture, actually. That's cool. Da -da 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 -da. Let's see, what else? Okay, all of these things have texture, actually, that we had uh, found in one of the previous episodes. Mead, that'll be fun. I'm assuming the excess honey will have something to do with that. Sheep hide, sheep skin, etc. So it looks to me like there's really not that much more that's been added, at least officially. Flax, I don't know if that was there before. Flax and linseed, possibly. But other than that, this update is mostly bug fixes. And I don't think it's anything that we had really been dealing with outside of maybe a couple incidental things here or there. But this episode, we're going to do something with this big empty space right here. And a couple of people suggested some very good ideas. We had a park proposed for up here since it's kind of a central area and also some uh, wagon sheds. And I think a wagon shed is going to be a pretty good place to start, especially because we have all these warehouses right here. So what we're going to do, we'll go ahead and put, see if I can fit three up here. I doubt it, but we're going to try. No, oh, come on. I need to buy a new mouse pad so I can actually use my mouse effectively here. I think we're actually going to be able to fit three. All right. All right, that is pretty close. So those will be a good way to use things over here. And what we're going to do now is plant some trees at the back. Actually, let's go ahead and set a fence up here. We'll just go right the way down here. Too long, too long, too long. We'll put one there and one there. So now we actually have a fence to attach all this to. And then what I'm envisioning here is kind of a, like a narrow thing right down here in the middle. That would just be kind of like a, a road more or less, but it will also have trees and benches and stuff. And then we'll figure out some more stuff to do right here. But we're going to go ahead and find big arch number two, our favorite of all time. And we'll go ahead and put something right here. And then again, up here, roughly the same distance. And if it's not perfect, then Hey, nothing wrong with that. Be about the maximum length with one post. Looks good to me. Oh, uh, there. Building up a storm over here. That was quite long, long, loud. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll put this right here. Look at all those cows go. All right, so it's a little wider at the bottom, but hey, that's not necessarily bad. And of course, these people have to purchase all of the goods that we can possibly sell them. How do we still have no honey? Okay, something, something fishy has got to be going on here, because I know these people have tons. I wonder if maybe they just can't sell it. Hmm. Well, that's something we can worry about at some point. So we'll go ahead and order wagons. Of course, we don't have draft horses yet, but we'll go ahead and once these all three are built, we'll be able to have them all copy their settings from the ones down here. Yeah, there they are, down here. And that'll be good. But while they're doing that, of course, we have some work to do with our favorite, well, not necessarily our absolute favorite trees, but we do end up using these more often than not. Cottonwood trees. So we'll start right there at that corner. We'll come down here to this corner. And then we're going to find a halfway point, more or less. It's not going to be perfect, perfect, but nothing said it ever had to be, right? 
And we'll divide that in half again, and this side as well. Then it gets a little easier to divide in half now, and that's probably about as much as we're going to be able to get in terms of tree placements, just because I know the spacing on these can be kind of, kind of annoying. Put one more there, and yeah, we're not going to be able to place maybe a couple spots we could have put trees, but just those few will be fine. So what we can actually do now is we can take benches as the snow falls. We can take benches and, uh, you know, actually, they need to put more bushes in this game. So I'm going to get real tired of putting these bushes everywhere. Come on. So we're just going to end up putting all these bushes everywhere. And you guys are going to get real tired of watching, watching me place bushes. All right, so that's a whole bunch of bushes. What we can do now is put some benches in right between trees, just slightly in front of bushes. All right, I think that's just about equidistant here. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but as you undoubtedly know by now, excuse me, I am very interested in uniformity. If there's a way to make it look not exactly unnatural, then we'll go for that. Then we'll turn around and do the exact same thing over here. It's kind of hard to tell where the trees are before they get tall, huh? All right, one more down here. All right, so it really is quite uniform, isn't it? Well, we can put in some birdhouses. Put one in right here in the middle. Uh, I bet you thought I was going to put another one right in front of the other one, didn't I? <laughs> I fooled you. There. That's a little bit. So we have three of these things, and there are men working. So we can safely put wagons there. And then this is going to leave us space over here to have a little bit of a walkway. But more importantly, we can put some production right here. Or possibly even some houses. I haven't thought about that yet. Let's go ahead and go down here to our stable. And we have quite a few houses, houses, horses. Wow, I'm sorry, it's late when I'm recording this. Okay, so let's go ahead and take three of these guys. Oh, draft horse has to be two years old, okay. Well, we have to leave a female and that. So we'll go ahead and do just those for right now. And this will give our carpentry several, several things to do. But now we have somehow less open vacancies than we did. People keep dying, getting buried in our lovely little cemetery down here. So this is almost half full. We'll come by at uh, some point and put more of these in. I always love watching the cows just kind of all travel in one straight line. It's kind of funny. All right, so... These people still actually no, they've sold. Oh, I, they, okay, they didn't have honey. They never had honey. Those honey people were elsewhere, and these people have some honey. But it looks like they're actually selling some of it, unlike our friends up here, which is. I don't understand how they have so much and refuse to sell any of it. And this is actually completely full. So we need people to get some of this stuff out of here. Well, if anybody ever buys raspberries from us, then that'll help with that. And I noticed a lot of you last episode had good things to say about the houses in the woods. So I think we might want to add some more down here. 
I don't want to demolish any trees because I don't really like looking at the random straight paths, but I think there are a couple more places where we could find good places to put houses, like right there. And maybe in here somewhere. Yep, that'll work. Again, I want to try to avoid cutting down trees if I can help it. So, yeah, we can fit a lot of these in here a little more tightly than you might think. That'll work right there. Again, we need to make sure that they are within range of the market, which I believe most of these will be. So it's you turned right around. Right there is fine. How about another house? A little more rotated right there. We already have one there. So what about a house? Where's the... Nope, that's the wrong key. I think the doorway is on this side. It's not like it really matters. Nope, that one's going to demolish a tree. Oh well, I misclicked. We'll put one there. Yeah, that's probably okay for now. So this will add another nine houses. Yeah, let's go for a tenth. Let's find one more. We already have one here. We have one there, one there, one there. Ah, I can put one right here. We'll put that just like that, and there's 10. So they'll be busy with that for a little bit, and that should also help with our stuff sometimes, although apparently not right now in April. There won't be a whole lot of open vacancies. But we did check this out. They are... Oh, there's no boats. Well, last time I checked, you might need boats to do fishing. Of course, we can always produce dried fish. Oh, well, we can bump that up to a thousand. There we go. All right, Marifa, are you going to buy anything useful? You can buy salt. Very good. Sunflower oil. We probably should start exporting dried fish. I'm going to import hemp. I don't know why we don't have people selling honey. It doesn't make any sense. I'll go ahead and buy some of that. I'm not going to buy horses. I can just make them myself. All right, now. So I think up here we should. Okay, we have a grand total of one draft horse. Okay, well, that's helpful, I guess. Now, they are kind of far away from a uh, water platform right here. So let's not forget to put in some water for these horses up here. Let's see, anywhere I can put this that's going to be relatively easy to get to for them. I think I can probably fit it in right about here. Yeah, we'll put one right there. And then this entire area in front of here you can't really do anything with because of how the uh, Horses come in and out. I don't want to mess with that necessarily. The one, the one should be fine because there is one right here that is designated for citizens and production. Just want to make sure that they uh, get that going. We'll go ahead and move that on up. And now people will hopefully start to use this. Hey, they might even bring cows through here. That would be kind of funny. And once we have more wagons going, then it should be a huge boost to our transit and everything. The, come on, the, you guys, you guys gotta start selling your honey. Come on, there's there's like two houses in this entire village that are producing honey, and these people are selling it, and you're not. So figure it out. Well, they're not really doing much of anything either. Mm -mm -mm. Yep, that is all taken care of. I wonder, okay, 
So this, there's another one of the stupid white lines again. So I guess cart, some, somebody said something about that means the uh, thing is inaccessible. But uh, I think that's pretty accessible, in my opinion at least. So that's a cart shed going to, or a cart parking going to a cart parking, going to something over here, this house. Okay, well, I don't know what's up with that. We'll just have to ignore it. That is pretty annoying and ugly, though. What are we growing here? Sunflowers, potatoes, hemp, buckwheat, hemp, buckwheat. How are none of these fallow? Hmm. That is, that is just strange how none of these are fallow at the same time. Hmm. Okay, so we not have... These cows are in there. We don't have enough uh, fallow fields for all of our cows. Hmm. That's a strange problem to run into. I might have messed something up when I set up all this. Now let's check on these guys. These guys have boats yet? Yes, they do. And they're producing dried fish as well as regular fish. So I think things are going relatively well. I've got two horses, and these are still waiting, of course. All right, so come down here. All right, you three, get busy. Not going to, oh, should probably turn that back on. That might help. I want I want to know why this is almost entirely, all the granaries are almost entirely empty. So are people with uh, the farm, their gardens just not selling anything? That seems really... Uh, really strange. I wonder if there's been changes to this. So we, we might have to mess with the uh, purchase from the citizens price here. So if we put this back to 100, raise people's wages, so we can actually implement a wealth tax. I know we hadn't started messing with this, but let's go ahead and just jack this way up. Then we can lower the rent a little bit. Take this all the way up to 50. So we can look at our import-export. It's actually, we're doing a lot less of that lately. I want to know why that is. So imported, so like all this stuff imported, we're buying from our local citizens. This is... Oh, don't crash on me. Hmm. Okay, so we're back after the crash. And it seems like we haven't really lost anything, but I did find a very interesting glitch messing with the treasury. So none of these settings saved. I clicked on the imports for cabbage, and the game crashed. So if I do that again, it's not crashing. So I don't know, I don't know what that was about, but... We were, we were in the process of fixing all this stuff. We were going to raise the market products price and the buy from citizens price to encourage them to actually, you know, sell it. So let's try putting the wealth tax up to 10. Then we can lower the rent. I won't make you sit through all of this, but we will lower this. Just a tiny bit here. Go down to 200. I will do this off camera before the next episode. But what the wealth tax does, from my understanding, is that replaces the kind of cheat codey way that we're messing with the rent. We're using the rent as a siphon of sorts to try and get extra wealth out of villagers. So your wealthy people in the town, it's most likely going to be your mayor and his wife, and this whole time they've had almost no money because we've been siphoning it off. But if we go back up here and we look in, actually it's this screen, your wealth distribution here. Now that we've started kind of messing with that stuff, some people have money. I think these are a lot of the people that have more recently moved in. But now that this wealth tax is implemented, anytime they go over 100, which we haven't had any in a very long time, 
they will get their uh, money taken from them. And uh, in true socialist fashion, I suppose. But we will we'll see how this progresses as I mess with the economic stuff. I don't want to go too into that because it's honestly not makes for kind of unexciting YouTube content. But let's take a look at what we've gotten done so far. Put this back up to speed. We built some more of these lovely wagon sheds. Still waiting on the carpentries to do their job. We built this kind of a kind of a park type thing with a bunch of benches, trees. These will grow up to be quite nice, just like these here. And we placed some more houses in the woods. It'll be uh, it'll be nice when they're. Uh, little more developed but of course these people are going to need water and they're going to need food variety as well and I cannot figure out why these granaries are not storing or more not buying food from other people that doesn't really make any sense these people who don't have gardens need to be buying stuff as well hmm well that was part of the reason why I wanted to boost the market products uh, price thing here to try and encourage people to sell. But we will uh, we'll find out, I suppose. What we do need to, before we get out of here today, we do need to build some more wells down here. I can't remember if I built one over here or not. We're just going to pretend that I haven't. We'll go ahead and put right here in front of this house. Then we'll put another one over here. If I can fit it next to this house without demolishing a tree. Yep, we'll do that. And then we'll put one more up here. It's kind of uh, off behind this house right here. There we go. So that is a couple more wells. We'll go ahead and bump those to the front of the queue. Yeah, look, look at our town. It is progressing quite nicely. We're at just under 600 residents. We'll probably get over there as soon as these houses get built. And 26 years in, I know my previous Alpha 3 Let's Play, we were probably most of the way to 1,000 at this point. In episode 28, I honestly can't remember it very well. But we will, uh, we will see what happens, I suppose. Now all of these people are complaining about food variety. No one is selling to the granaries. That is, I just, I don't understand. Maybe I have to toggle it? Well, I don't know. We'll find out what what exactly is going on with all of this stuff. I guess it can't hurt to turn these off and back on. I mean, that's what tech support tells you to do when your computer messes up, right? I think in the meantime, we might have to import some other things because these people are going to be very unhappy indeed if they, uh, they get all that stuff so we'll go ahead and send messengers to all of these and that will be the last thing we'll do in this episode is we will try and get some more food coming in but I am very very happy with how this town is progressing I think these houses in the woods are a fantastic addition and kind of break away from the whole monotony of the straight grid and everything. All right, so first messenger has arrived. Let's just go ahead and we're not going to buy 6,000 honey. Let's buy 2,000. Dried fish we have a ton of, so we don't really need to. Raspberries, onions, we can sell some onions from here. Go ahead and take care of that. Clothing, we have 870. There's, of course, economic rebalancing is always going to be problematic here. All right, so these people are offering iron. We should probably buy some more of that. Honey, we already bought the other one. So we'll go ahead and sell some of this stuff. Clothing, 260. Yeah, why not? No, I don't need horses. Buckwheat. Let's buy buckwheat, just because I don't I don't want to be caught in a position where people are starving. That would not be a very good of me as a town overlord, would it? No, we we want to uh, 
make sure people are appreciated. Wow, we have almost 2,000 raspberries here. Okay, so we'll sell those. Flour, we'll go ahead and buy a ton of. Sallow, we'll buy a ton of. Potatoes, why do we not have any potatoes? Go ahead and take care of that. And then our last group of people. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, why not? I've got the money. We'll sell the salt. Okay, so we're going to have a whole mess of trading occurring here. And I don't know, I've got to figure out why people aren't buying or selling to the trading post. Maybe we just haven't kept pace with our needs. But we will uh, we'll find out. I know it's not because the pigs are eating everything. There's hardly any of them in here. Well, well, that will be a problem for episode 29 because we are just about out of time. Let's find a nice spot to take a picture for this episode's title card. Let's see, I think... Oh, look at these trees. We have... Still, man, these guys are so slow. The carpentries are useless. I should probably build more. I, I love like the the low angle stuff on this. I don't I don't want I don't want to get all this in here because that just makes me feel like I don't know how to play the game. So let's go. Let's get people harvesting, huh? We'll do that. Get a nice angle here and screenshot. But like I said, that's all the time we have for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. We will be continuing all sorts of other fun stuff, troubleshooting this and other Ostrov content, as well as Dawn of Man coming soon. And I've got a couple other things I'm excited to try out. I hope you stick around for them. As always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.